Today, we're going to be speaking uh, for the first time, maybe not the last time. We'll see how it goes with Dennis Prager. Many of you may know him from Prager U, from his radio program. He had a conversation not too long ago with our friend Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks. Dennis, welcome. It's, it's great to speak to you today. Well, thank you for having me. Just to start, and this can be so quick and then we move on just as a sort of sanity check. I've started to ask guests in this year, last year, the following question. Is there any way to accurately say that Donald Trump won the 2020 election? Just a simple answer if there is one. And if not, it's fine for you to explain. So I, I have I have a relatively simple answer. And I've it. given it from the election day to this day. Yes, sir. I am agnostic, which has satisfied neither the left nor the right. OK, my my colleagues on the right want me to say it was stolen mm -hmm. and people on the left want me to say we are certain it wasn't stolen. Well, and half of the right also wants you to say that, right? Half of the right wants me to. Oh, that, I wouldn't say half. I, I would say most people on the right believe it was stolen or, or that there was a good chance it was. Wow. Uh, I don't know what that gains us, but it, it, it's fair that you ask. See, it's funny. Can, uh, see, you regard that as a sanity check. I do. So, OK, so let me offer my sanity check. Please. Do you believe that men who say they're women can compete with women in women's sports? I think in a lot of sports that does not make sense. So how do you was that the answer you expected? Because you did a little bit of a look to the side there. Did you think I no, was going to look to the side because I took off my earphones? Understood, sir. I didn't. I realized that I don't need them. Okay. Um, but this is a so, different topic, Dennis. I'm sorry. It's a different topic. Did do we want to close on the election? first? Oh, well, you said you would just wanted to ask that question for a sanity check. OK, okay. and you're okay. agnostic I mean, is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So you I am agnostic because so many things happened that are uh, that are that were odd or unique, mm. uh, like it was the first time that a president had ever uh, an incumbent president had ever gotten more votes than he did in his first election and lost uh, that uh, all the all the swing states went in his favor, that 17 of the 18 counties that are considered bellwether counties went in his favor. We are, those who think something bad happened. Yeah. are not out of their minds. OK, I mean, we don't have to make this the subject of the conversation, but things sometimes happen for the first time. I guess the question I would ask as a follow up would be, did you see compelling evidence from any one state that suggests that Joe Biden lost it, even though he was given the win? Is there a single state where you feel confident yeah. it was stolen? Georgia, Georgia might be one of them. Uh, Pennsylvania might be one. Uh, uh, and and of course, people say, because I, I, I love to have people I differ with on my show. And so I, I and I read the left. I only wish the left read the right as much as I read the left. Well, I try uh, to. But what evidence was there in do, Georgia? You probably do. I, th I think I think if, if you do, you're you're atypical. Uh, but but in, 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 in any event. Yeah. What's the Georgia uh, I'm evidence? All the time that courts dismissed the the all these cases. That's true. Uh, but that's the tragedy. See, if I were an America loving Democrat and there are 11 America loving Democrats and there are America hating Democrats, there are both. But there are America loving Democrats. If I were one, I would say, please let us air all of these complaints. Yeah. Let us have some type as close as we can to some neutral authority not rule on it, just allow the American public to hear what evidence there might be. And I'll add another thing. If one believes, and I'd love you to respond to this. Yeah. If one believes that Donald Trump is a, a neo-Nazi fascist. Something I've never said, but you, we could maybe okay, find but, someone but who it, believes that. Yeah. Well, well, OK, I believe you haven't said it, but it's not germane to my Okay. To my argument, whether cool. you said it or not, it's said often that he is a fascist. <clears throat> excuse me, that he is a fascist is constantly said uh, on the left. And and so uh, if you believe that, aren't you morally bound to cheat on his behalf? For example, 
if I were in Germany in 1932 during the elections that brought Hitler to power, I tell you, I would have cheated mm. on behalf of, of any other party uh, than than Hitler's party. Yeah. Aren't you morally bound to cheat if you believe the man is a fascist? <laughs> You'd have to ask someone who believes that. I don't know. I mean, it's I think, listen, we only have a half hour and we're five minutes. Yeah, so in. look, well, let's talk. I, about I think what I would say is the audience can judge. Is there evidence out of Georgia that's convincing to them? Is your answer to did Trump win? logical into them in any way. Let's let the audience decide on this section of the conversation Fair. I'm really interested in talking to you about woke, anti woke, cultural issues, etc. Now, you and I could pick one thing like cat litter boxes in bathrooms or quote men and women's sports or drag shows or whatever, and we could just talk about that for 25 minutes. But I want to zoom out a little bit because you've been in this for a while and I've been following many of the things you've said about these issues. Here's my curiosity. If you look at polling, if you're going to just reject polling, then we'll talk about that. But let's assume that we have some polling that tells us something that is relatively close to what the country believes. Record support for same sex marriage today. Record number of people saying I'm moving away from religion. Highest in the Roe v. Wade era of the country says abortion should be legal in most cases. Sixty percent says we haven't gone far enough on making trans people feel welcome. OK, I could go on, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Do you feel as though this is a lost cause and the country has clearly gone in a different direction from where you would like to see it? Or what do you think might happen that would turn around this 30, 40 year trend of moving to the left culturally that I believe we are seeing in the polls. There's no question we're moving uh, to, the, to the left culturally. Uh, uh, the first thing people have to do is recognize reality. You, you may not, you may or may not be happy with it. it, it just, just parenthetically, I just did an hour of radio because uh, I do a lot of hours that are not politics. And sure. I, and it was about a subject because I'm writing a commentary on the Bible and I'm, I'm finishing volume four in, in which I discuss in, on one verse, is there luck in life or is everything God's will? I, I'm a, a deep believer in God. And of course, I believe there's bad luck because that's reality. If you get a kidney stone, and I use that example, I don't believe God placed the kidney stone in your kidney. Hmm. I, I believe that it was your crappy luck that you got a kidney stone. But, but a lot let of me let me just dig it not to interrupt, but I want to make sure we know what we what you mean by luck. Do you mean by let's imagine the prevalence of kidney stones is two percent just for hypothetical for our conversation. God created a world in which there's a two percent prevalence of kidney stones. You had the bad luck to be in the two percent. Is that what you're correct. saying? That's correct. That's OK, now, why did God create the kidney stones to begin with? Because God, God did not create uh, a perfect nature. I mean, f uh, trees can fall, avalanches can happen. Okay, uh, it is our task to fight cancer and and to and to be able to live with avalanches. Got I, it. I, I I don't I I would uh, the human being wanted to leave the Garden of Eden. That's my that's my take on the story. We rather live in a free universe than in a perfect universe. Okay. Okay. So, so, but I'm I'm glad you you went through theology with me. Anyway, I'm the only reason I raised this is I am not happy to acknowledge the power of bad luck or good luck, but it is the reality. I am not happy that forty uh, that forty five percent of uh, of young Americans say, uh, according to Pew, uh, that uh, uh, they believe in free speech but not for hate speech. A, it shows you how incoherent young people's thinking is that they don't understand that the whole point of free speech is to allow speech that you can't stand. OK, I'm a Jew. If you don't think the Holocaust happened, you're a liar. You are sick. You are perverted. But you are allowed to say it. By the way, you're not allowed in most European countries. You can be in prison for denying the Holocaust. Yeah. And to be years. clear, I'm a Jew as well. And I believe exactly what you just said. I believe you. Okay. I, I had a feeling you would. But uh, but just know your side is as opposed to free speech as more opposed than ever 
any segment of Americans has ever been. Mm. We, we are living through the greatest crisis of free speech in American history. That poll is an example. Here's another one. 25% okay. of Americans aged 40 and over have never been married, as opposed to 8% in 1980. We went from 8 to 25% in 40 years. Can we talk about that one a little more? That one sure. I find interesting. I'm not 40, but I, I, I'm in a long term relationship. I have a baby. I'm not married. It's a conscious decision I've made evaluating what is marriage in 2023. Is that the sort of contract I'm interested in? Do I need that to mediate my relationship with my girlfriend? Are there protections that I find necessary? I, I don't know that for me and for so many other people I know that are probably in the group you're sort of describing here. I don't know that it's any kind of moral commentary or a commentary on the nature of relationships, but more about for most of human history, this sort of contract didn't exist. There was a period where it peaked. I think it was the 50s or 60s or 70s. It, it seems to be in decline. It's sort of a blip. I don't know that it's that indicative of the, the, the broader point you're trying to make, Dennis. It's funny you should say this. Uh, I went to a wedding last Sunday night and my wife just spoke to uh, the woman who got married. Yeah. And they had lived together for about four years. And she said, everything feels different. And I always explain to people, you use the word girlfriend. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Please. That you would be conveying a very different image of yourself and your relationship if you said my wife. I agree. Oh, okay. I, I think that that is a worthy commitment that human beings should make. I would like your, ch you have a child, I, I, I believe. Yes, indeed. I'd like your child to believe mommy and daddy are husband and wife, not just boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> it's better for the kid, better for you and better for the world. But why do you think then that this marriage thing was the sort of more prevalent status for such a tiny blip in human history. Well, and now it's that. already diminishing. Well, I mean, the Bible was written 3000 years ago and everybody got married. I don't know why you call it a blip in history. It, it was it, it's universal. People got married in virtually every civilization. Well, so if we consider modern humanity, 250,000 years for most of time, humans were not okay. getting married. All right. Look, if, if I, I can't talk about pre stone age or, or pre pre excuse me pre uh, bronze age man okay fair okay since the bronze age people have gotten married <laughs> and and you know what we we've done better by every metric marriage makes a better a better a person and a better world yeah what i see is commitment between two parents and probably a fair amount of economic stability are really the ideal circumstances. But I think I don't want to get away from your broader point, Dennis, which I think is you're recognizing the reality oh, of the I situation and, I'm fighting it and you're fighting double, it and I'm fighting it because I I, I believe that uh, graduating high school, getting a job and getting a ma getting married and getting married before you have a baby, that is almost the perfect mm. recipe for a better life. But going more broad on the other culture war issues I mentioned, you're 75. You've been at this for a while. Don't you think that maybe the, it's simply being lost or let me ask it in a different way. What catalyst do you think might happen that might turn this thing around so that the so-called kind of anti woke side wins or resurges? Well, it's a great question and I don't have a perfect answer. I do think that the uh, chaos of the trans movement, hmm. that people support the removal of girls' breasts when they're 18 or even sometimes younger, or boy, boys getting castrated because they say they're girls. This has alarmed a fair number of people, even on your side of the spectrum. Hmm. They realize this is madness. We have gone out of our minds. And I, I, I know why we've gone out of our minds. I don't think you would you would uh, agree with my uh, analysis, but it, it is in. I could put it to you in one sentence. It is uh, it is a quote attributed to G.K. Chesterton, but 
we can't verify he said it. I am only saying that because I didn't come up with this. Okay. When people stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. Mm. And and this trans movement is the proof. I said on Bill Maher's show four years ago. Yeah. Right before uh, you saw that, it, it's gone viral. I saw it. Uh, he said, he said, oh, Trump lies. I said, it doesn't compare to the lies of the left. America is systemically racist and men menstruate. And he cracked up, the whole audience cracked up and the whole panel cracked up. They were all laughing at me. And Bill Maher said, this is why it's gone viral. There are like 10 million views of, of this uh, yeah. particular scene where he says, Dennis, where'd you come up with that one? And that was 2019, of the fall of 2019. And, and people go, what are you nuts? Who says men menstruate? Within two years, if you denied men menstruate, you were considered transphobic. Well, listen, I mean, I'm glad to have I don't I'm going to be honest. I don't know that this is the most interesting thing for us to talk about. But that being said, I have said very clearly there are some areas if we just say the world of trans issues, there are some areas where I feel quite confident, like, for example, when it comes to bathrooms, I was just in Spain, beautiful country, terrific seafood. I recommend it to you, Dennis. The bathrooms, the, the bathrooms are just gender neutral. There is a sink there and a bunch of stalls and people cross in the sink to wash their hands and you use the stall you want. Everything's fine. The bathroom issue I genuinely do not care about, even when they are organized the way they are in the United States. Another example that really just does not seem like an issue to me. People want to be addressed by a different pronoun. I'm going to guess based on what I see. And if someone if I get it wrong, I'm not insulting anyone. If someone tells me otherwise, I'll kind of just do my best. You know, we can kind of negotiate these things on some of this stuff. Like a talking point I'm hearing a lot is so many trans people who go through gender affirming care regret it. And that's a sign that something is very wrong. When I research it, it seems it's under one percent that express regret. And for some of that one percent, it's temporary. So I'm ambiguous about what is the right thing to do in some of these areas. I'm open to hearing from you to the extent that I judge you to be a good faith uh, uh, participant in the conversation. I don't know the answer with some sports. You know, it, it seems pretty clear that there is an advantage to being biologically male at birth. It seems unfair in those cases to arrange it in a certain way. In other words, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. So I, I think that I am very open minded well, on this. Curious, you know? I'm just curious. Uh, it's not even a challenge. Yeah. Name me a sport where, where there is women sports where it doesn't make a difference. Chess. Well, apparently it does. Interestingly. Uh, I was just reading that the International Chess Federation, whatever whatever the name of the group is, yeah, uh, uh, did, uh, noted that men did play chess better, generally speaking. By the way, if you're right, and I have I have no agenda here, yeah, then there should not be women's chess. Right. So this chess is an the interesting very fact one because that it exists right. suggests that there there is an advantage to separating the sexes. My so understanding is and again, I think we're both trying to learn here. My understanding is the reason that the women's chess division was originally created was not enough young girls were participating. Okay, because, fair enough, but it's yeah. not a physical sport anyway. So yeah. it's, it's not a sport. No, I we mean, listen, I don't know. Right. So so that you all right. No, no, no. But you said where it doesn't matter. But if if it doesn't matter, there would be no reason for women's uh, women's whatever it is, track, field, weightlifting, tennis. But apparently there is a difference. A, a male who said he's a female won in Canada two weeks ago. And he not only set records in the women's division, and I am saying he because I think he's a fraud okay. uh, and, a, and, a, and a narcissist for hurting women like this. He lifted 250 pounds more than the first place woman. Right. You, you'd, I know you don't think that's fair, no. but on your side, the entire LGBTQ movement is unanimous in saying you're transphobic if you think that is wrong. So, I mean, listen, um, a couple of examples, uh, equestrian, right? I mean, it's physical. You're riding a horse. A lot of it has to do with the horse. If biological men who tend to be heavier want to compete against women, 
It doesn't seem like a major problem. Sailing is physical. You have to dominate the sail as you are being pushed around by wind. Uh, bowling, I believe, is is gender segregated. I don't know that it needs to be. I mean, darts is another example. I, I mean, these are just some examples. Right. So wherever it made a difference, you'd be opposed to it. So you are transphobic, according to your side. Okay. Please not understand that. Well, but I think the point that I'm trying to make to you is that there are many people on my side that are taking my view and sort of trying to figure out something that is admittedly not completely figured out yet. It seems incorrect oh, to oh, cast it, it, us it, as it's, it's figured out in most cases. I mean, it, it, it's fi it's figured out uh, for for race, uh, for racing, for track, for weightlifting, for tennis. Yeah, oh, it, 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 it's pretty universally. Uh, I don't like it. And as I said, if there's no difference whatsoever, it is silly to have men's and women's sports. To Fair, begin yeah. With. And so you just listed a couple examples. I gave you five. Fine. Sports is one aspect of this. Where are you on something like bathrooms, for example, and bathroom usage? Do you want like a genitalia check or what are you what are you looking for? I, I think that a, a a an elementary school, for example, where a boy says I'm a girl. Yep and would be exposed in front of the girls as 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 they are in the case now of college uh, swim uh, meets where the if a guy says he's a girl he is uh, Leah Thomas exposed his penis to the to the girls on the on the pen But swim. Dennis I hate to interrupt you first said kids in college they're adults right so which are you talking about right. both oh so I'll start I, I'm, I'm just giving an example of where it does occur okay uh, with adults, I think I think that here, the, your your anatomy should dictate in elementary school which bathroom you go to. In elementary Ideally, school, okay. By the way, I have no problem if, if, if when there is a unisex ba a bathroom with one stall, anybody goes in. Yeah, that's uh, I have uh, I I have on occasion. Where there is one stall, I have gone into the women's bathroom if I really had to go to a restaurant. Wow. And it was a little, a little nothing thing with just one toilet. Sure. So, and I wouldn't, and I recommended to women to go into the men's because if my table was near the bathroom. So, very I, genteel I of you. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, I said that's it's that's very genteel of you. I, I'm sure the no, women it's not appreciate genteel, it. It's just common sense. I, I'm a big believer in common sense. But so honest. elementary school, it's a genitalia. But yes, your, at, your anatomy should dictate which bathroom you go to in elementary school. Yes. OK. And then in any other scenario, should it also? So uh, if. If it involves exposure of your genitalia, it should be dictated by anatomy. If it does not involve exposure of your genitalia, look, as I say, it's I say this tongue in cheek, but it's true. If a man exposes himself to to women or a woman and she has not asked to see it, he's arrested. Mm. But uh, where where if he says I'm a woman, then she could be arrested if she complains. It's a little it's a little weird what our situation. Why can't decent people just say, look, women are not aching to see most men's penises. Mm. Therefore, if I say I'm a woman, uh, I will not expose myself in front of women, even though I think I'm a woman. Why can't why can't someone be that decent? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to, I, I'll tell you. I don't ever see any geni geni any any genitalia in bathrooms in general. You know, like what is the that's exposition? Right. I, I, okay, that's yeah. fine. Oh yes, I understand that. So that's not so, a problem so for you. Then. Theoretically, a man says he's a woman and he enters a stall and and nobody sees anything. Then why would anybody complain? Yeah, li that's listen, that sounds reasonable to me. That sounds eminently reasonable. Okay, what you're saying, we can talk the, about the, these the, other the scenarios. Battle is, the battle is way way higher. Yeah, the battle is what we call so-called uh, a, a gender uh, care the the uh, the the removal by the way you if it's the two percent or under one percent whatever you said of of, of detransitioners yeah uh that's a it, it, i i believe it's as close to a pure lie you're not telling it i know you read it i read it too it, it's there's no doubt in my mind it's a lie uh, uh there's a lot of lying on a lot of these issues uh, because people feel if they have a, a 
a humane agenda, they don't have to tell the truth. Well, no, listen, uh, I mean, let me just for proof. I have proof for this. Virtually every European country has stopped this care for minors. It has ended. England has ended it. Sweden has ended it. Denmark has ended it. Norway has ended it. And that's only the ones I know by heart. So here's my uh, concern about we, this. We, we and Canada, I, I'm, I'm, I really apologize. No, that's okay. I, we and Canada are the worst countries on earth in terms of what we can do to minors if they say that they are the other sex. I don't have that data in front of me, but let's just assume it's not even germane to the next part. I want to go with this. Here's my thought on this. I also. Am not 100 percent on some elements of this type of care for minors. I still am, am learning more and doing my research. One of the problems I'm having with some of the claims that are made by who, those who I would colloquially say are on your side, I know not everybody agrees on everything, is that when I research some of their claims, they are lies. Like, for example, this is super specific. This guy, Matt Walsh, went on Joe Rogan's podcast and said that prepubescent girls are getting their breasts chopped off. Now, let's put aside for a second that prepubescent girls essentially don't have breasts. Let's put that biological reality aside for a second. And when Joe said how many, he said, oh, it's like millions or something. And it was like 900 people over the last six years or something like that. When I see such blatant distortions about what is happening, it's hard to believe that these folks are operating in good faith. I have no comment except to say your your, your point strikes me as rather valid. How could a prepubescent girl have her breasts removed when so few of them have breasts? It sounds that, weird. Yeah, that, that is what puberty brings uh, with it: menstruation and breasts. But yeah. uh, uh, so I, I will actually ask Matt. I, I, I know everybody at Daily Wire. And yeah. I, I will ask him because it's hard to imagine that he would have said that. I'm yeah. not saying that you're you're acting in bad faith. A lot of things are misheard. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he misspoke, but it, it shouldn't be happening. If a kid says to a parent, a 10 year old, okay, let's take a 10, let's take a 12, it doesn't matter. Mom, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. Mom, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. Yep. The reaction of a sane and decent society is, my, my darling, nature made you a boy. Or if they believe in God, God made you a boy. Hmm. Or both, God and nature. You are not a girl. You are a boy. And we're going to get you help. Obviously, there are other things going on in your life, which is almost always the case in these kids' lives. And uh, look, how do you explain the, the like, thousand percent increase in trans kids uh, in the last uh, five years? It's yeah. a social phenomenon. This is not a medical phenomenon. Well, I think I, that that's sort of a it's. I have an answer for that, and it relates to the same question of where did all these gay people come from 15 years no, ago? But, the gay, but gay people have not increased. My, my understanding is that no, folks who say in no, surveys, I am gay, it has increased. Bi I don't have the data in front of me. I don't have the data in front of me. Okay. Bisexuals have increased, and I have no doubt Bisexuals. about that. But uh, gay men have not increased. For a, gay men, it's a fixed, there's a certain percentage of males who will never be attracted to a female. It's sort of fixed in any given generation. OK, on the first point, it's interesting to me to hear you say if a 10 year old said that, hey, we're going to get you some help. It sounds like you're talking about therapy. Every medical professional I've spoken to about this says the first line here in exploring this is therapy. So it does sound like you agree with the start of the path that has been established. Yeah, but all of their, you can't even, I, I believe that there are therapists who could lose their license for, as a therapist. If they say to a, a girl, I want to help you work out peace with the sex that you are. That, that I'm not aware of that. I, I, I have to plead ignorance because yeah. I just don't know that. I don't it, know that. I know yeah, lots okay. of therapists. None of them have mentioned that that's a part of the protocol. All right. Ask, ask all the therapists, you know, I will. And, and not, not a, it's a challenge. Yeah, I'm no, curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. Can, can a therapist say to a 12 year old, you, uh, in fact, you're a girl and I'm going to help you work through your acceptance of that. Fair. Can a therapist say that? I'm going to find out. Get in trouble. I'm going to find out my stepmom supervises 12 therapists and I will find out what's going on, at least in one state. Dennis, I know you've got to run and that we're almost out of time. One just very last political thing. I'm curious. 
in 2016, you had said Trump was unfit to be a presidential candidate, let, let alone president. You've since I've seen you endorse and defend many of his actions as president. What changed? So I'm glad you mentioned that. So people should know he was my last choice among all the Republican no, uh, candidates for the nomination. Yeah. But once once he was nominated, I believe uh, and we can obviously do this in a part two if you'd like. I believe that it is very important for the left not to have power because there's no example in history of the left, not liberals. I always make a distinction between hmm. left and liberal uh, where they have not suppressed dissent. <clears throat> this is a uh, this is my greatest fear is the suppression of free speech hmm. because uh, that ends uh, uh, everything. So if a Republican is nominated, I will support him. He turned out to be, in my opinion, a superb president. I'm not a fan of his. Wow. Uh, but by the way, it's a, a big distinction. I wrote 25 years ago. It's in my book printed in 1998. It's called Adultery and Politicians, an essay I wrote. I don't care if a politician committed adultery. I see no linkage between fidelity and being a good president mm. or a good senator. Uh, I I am quite consistent on dividing between the macro and the micro in yeah. a public figure. King David uh, not only committed adultery, and he's a hero of the Bible. He not only committed adultery, he had the guy killed so he could sleep with his wife. OK, and that's pretty bad. That may or may not resonate with some in the audience. But so in other words, you're oh, still no, it's not a matter of resonating. <laughs> I, 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 I only make this point. No, my fight on this issue is not with the left. It's actually with many on the right who think that adultery disqualifies you from being a good leader. So uh, th th I don't I don't believe most people on the left think if you committed adultery, you can't be a good president. No, I mean, I certainly be don't believe that. Right. Yeah. So ironically, it, it should resonate with your audience. Hey, um, if you had your choice of everybody running on the Republican side right now, if you knew whoever you picked would be president, who would you pick? So I'm actually happy with with a fair number of them, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, I wish Larry Elder had been on the stage. Uh, mm. I, I think the RNC uh, cheated him and that bothers me. I know Larry, uh, if, if people heard him and saw him, they would be blown away at, at his erudition, knowledge and, and brilliance. Uh, and, uh, you know, if Larry were president, I would retire from my work. OK, <laughs> but of the ones that are there. running and made the uh, debate stage. Yeah, I don't have one single favorite. Okay. I really like virtually every one of them. I don't like Chris Christie. Wow. That's the that, one guy I think is sane. I, I'm sure you do because yeah. he hates Trump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, D Dennis, I'm going to let you go. But one last thing, just because of who you are, I have to have you weigh in on this. When it comes to um, when it comes to corned beef, do you go lean or do you tell him just give me the fat pieces as well? Yes, actually, uh, it's funny you should ask because I'm on a pretty uh, rigid diet now, which doesn't allow for carbs and they want me to have the fat. Oh, do they? Yes, fat is the government screwed up the Americans with their chart on having grains a lot and fat a little <laughs> uh -oh. fat is not bad for people. That that's it's actually in many ways good for people. Well, so saturated fat, question. you know, but and, all right. So you go lean. I take it. I just okay. don't like so the now, texture. All right. So I have one final word for you, please. OK. If you get married, I will attend your wedding. <laughs> Attend or officiate. I even officiate. OK, fair enough. All right. Very good. Uh, are even though she's only half Jewish, I have to admit. I will. I will. Officially. You would still do it. Very good. All right. Dennis Prager, allowing us to bridge the gap between left and right, at least on some issues. Uh, I do really appreciate your time, Dennis. Thank you. Mutual. Thank you.